There's a super tall Texan immigration agent in the airport in Dallas, where my mom was giving over the green cards that we had. And um, he looks at all, everybody looks at all the green cards, and he said, ma'am, everything looks, uh, by the way, I'm sorry if there are any Texans in the world. <laughs> I like to play with accents. So he said, ma'am, I, I have to say, um, everything is fine with your papers, everything is just fine, and you're all gonna be able to come on in, except for the baby, that was me. Uh, she's not going to be able to come in. She's going to have to stay here in quarantine, so you can uh, just go ahead, but leave her, and uh, good luck. <laughs> I had a ration. And one of the greatest lessons I learned from my mom, and I didn't know this story until many, 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 many years later, is that, you know, there's this kind of power that she has, that we all have, that kind of comes from here, and oftentimes we're quieting, you know, and this is why she was like, I'm coming to the United States and there are laws and there's a constitution here. So the voice comes up and she just, you know, almost, I imagine her reaching up to the big um, bicep of the Texan immigration agent. But she basically looked at me and said, Sir, my name is Berta Hinojosa and my husband is Dr. Raul Hinojosa and he has a job at the University of Chicago and we are going to be in Chicago, they are waiting for me in Chicago and if you have to, you can call the president of the University of Chicago because I am coming into this country with my four children, including the baby. Do you understand me, sir? He said, yes, I do, ma'am, come on in. <laughs> the first ever story that I did a 60 second spot on the newscast of NPR in 1985 when I was an intern. You're not gonna believe what the story was that I was reporting. Um, let's take a guess. Could it be a protest against immigration reform? <laughs> exactly. The first ever report I ever did was a group of protesters in front of INS, Immigration Naturalization Service, a service. <laughs> um, and people were protesting because they were going to um, pass the Immigration Reform and Control Act. So, um, and I made a decision that I wasn't Maria Hinojosa, that in fact I was going to be Maria Hinojosa. And um, I, it was kind of like, you know, I was young. I was like, I'm not Maria Hinojosa on the air, I'm Maria Hinojosa. And that ended up being something pretty extraordinary because it helped me to understand this core idea of taking control of our own narrative and taking control of our own power and taking control of our own voice. When I created my own newsroom, we took over Latino USA, expanded it. Gee, we won a Peabody and a Robert F. Kennedy Award. Um, yeah. And in my newsroom, I made a couple of decisions because soy la jefa. <laughs> Sometimes I call myself la pequeña jefa, but I'm still la jefa. So in our newsroom and on our air, you will never hear us use the term illegal to refer to a human being, ever. <laughs> and in our newsroom, you actually won't hear us use the term minority on the air. I'm not a minority. <laughs> in our worst moments, we have to imagine that we can, in fact, take hold of our own power and eat our fear and not stay stuck and understand the privilege that we have and find that voice from here. And maybe we're not grabbing immigration agents right now, necessarily, <laughs> but that we are using our voice and using our own narrative and using our power that we have which is my message to my students here at DePaul, that I love and I teach six months out of the year, I hate traveling here, but I love being here with them, is to say, own your power, especially as Latinos from Chicago, especially as Mexicanos from Chicago, especially as Latinos from the Midwest. If you don't think that the world is watching what you are doing, you're wrong. So, Take my story and own your power. We need it. Gracias.